everybody. It's magician Ken Scott. How are you? It's magic time. Oh, perfect. Ah, nice. You know, we always need a magic wand. Every magician needs a magic wand. I've got my magic wand. I've got my magic hat. We're all set. We can do our magic. We need the bunny rabbit. Here we go. The bunny rabbit from the hat. Tr tr Wait a minute. Things are always the way they appear. And there is the bunny. Hello, Forsyth County Libraries. My name is Ken Scott, the Magician, and thanks for being a part today. We're doing a magic show for you. We need some laughs right now, right? How about some magic? Hey, I got a big piece of rope and a small piece of rope. You can tell the difference. Small piece, large piece, you can tell the difference. Now, from where you're at, watch closely because we're going to take the small piece, the very small piece, and the large piece. You can tell the difference. Much difference. Yes, small piece, large piece. I'm going to take the large piece, put it next to the small piece. You can still see it. If I put this piece next to this small piece, you can still see it. But if I stretch that small one out, it gets longer and longer and longer and actually becomes the same size. I know. You're thinking, oh, how did you do that? You're probably wanting to clap. I can hear you. Perfect. Now, if you take these two pieces right here, you tie them together. Once you tie these together, you get two pieces that are tied in the center. Ready? Blow on it and look what happens. It slides off the rope. Whoa, I know. You're going, yes. Oh, I'll teach you this one too. Look, watch. You take this, you tie it once, you tie it twice. When you do that, it becomes a swirly, twirly little circle. Oh, look at that. I know. How does he do it? I'll teach it to you. Well, hopefully when I come to your library, I'll teach it to you. But I'll teach you this. If you hold the loop in your hand, hold the, what you got to do, hold it tight now. You got to take this, hold it in your hand very tight, hold the end in your hand like this, and then thread this one through like this. Put the loop on top of the rope and balance it. Watch. rock a -bye, baby. Go to sleep. Watch that loop. <gasps> Back together. It's magic. Forsyth County Libraries, let's have some fun. Hey everybody, you ready? We're going to do a trick while you're there and I'm here in my magic attic. We're going to do a card trick. I've got five big cards right here. In a moment, I'm going to show you these five cards spread out. I want you to look at only one card. Only look at one. And remember, put it in your mind and don't forget that card. Are you ready to play the game? Let me spread the cards out. Here we go. I'm going to show you the five cards really quickly. Look at only one. And here we go. Look at one card. You have one? Keep your eye on it. Don't forget it. Perfect, that was quick. Now, even though you're there and I'm here, I'm gonna read your mind and mix these cards up a little bit. And I think, yes, I'm gonna remove one card. I think it's the card that you are thinking of. You ready? I'm gonna show you the cards a moment. Look and see if you see your card. Ready? Tell me, is your card gone? Ah, perfect, it's magic. Hey, with all this virus stuff going around, I want to show you something that's been around. It's a magic trick that's been around for a long time just to explain germs and keeping our hands clean. Because at this time right now, we actually want to keep our hands clean. We want to wash. We want to sanitize as much as we possibly can. But just using soap and water is the best defense. Just washing your hands and not touching your face. That's what all the doctors say. Just keep your hands clean. Uh, don't touch your friends right now. Keep that distance. But if you keep your hands clean and wash, that's the best thing that you can do. And I'm going to show you a trick that we've been doing for a long time that may explain germs just a little bit for you. Okay, now at home you probably have some of this stuff. You just need some water, uh, you need some pepper, uh, any kind of black pepper, as long as it's just pure ground black pepper. Don't use the one you have to grind up, just use uh, ground black pepper. I'm sure your parents have this. And some soap, soap that we keep our hands clean, and just a plate. Any plate will work. A, uh, a plate from your, your dinner plate maybe, okay? Now, here's what we're going to do to show you this demonstration. Uh, you've got these, these ingredients that you're going to need for this. Now, in this case, we're going to call the pepper germ, but we all know that pepper is good. It's good in all our food. So this is just for demonstration that the pepper is just for demonstration. We're going to call it the germ, okay? But it's not. Pepper's good. Just for demonstration purposes, we're going to use it and just say it's the germ for now, 
just in this demonstration. Understand? Good. Now, you take the water, and what you want to do is you want to fill the water, just put some water in the bottom of the plate until the plate, the bottom of the plate, is filled with water. And as you can see, the bottom of the plate, well, it's tough to see because it's clear, but the bottom of the plate has water in it and you're good to go okay now take your pepper make sure you have it on sprinkle side or if you don't have if you have one of these make sure it's sprinkled you're going to sprinkle some of the pepper into the middle right about there as you can see the pepper right now again let's imagine that this pepper is germs okay again it's not but let's just pretend like this is germs that we get by touching things touching doorknobs or just getting things on our hand okay ah, by washing our hand by washing our hands with this with soap and water on our hand and vigorously rubbing your hands together like this it helps get these germs off now I'm gonna take a little bit of the soap and put just a little bit of soap on the end of my finger and I'm gonna put it right in the middle of the germ okay or the pepper you ready watch what happens to the pepper when I put the soap in there you ready you can see the pepper sprayed away the germs went away and that's just because we washed our hands with soap hey no germs keep your hands clean wash them all the time hey I'm Ken Scott and welcome we're in this beautiful football field it's empty right now it's completely empty but if you like music and magic you're gonna like this because right now we got my buddies here on this platform and don't take your eyes off this because what's gonna happen one shot on this football so the way you see it here is the way it's right here check that out ready raise it up guys ready here we go don't blink all right on the count of three one two and three look at that a band a real life 90 piece band. You don't see that every day, do you? A real football band right here. Take a look! Hey, have you ever wanted money to appear? Take one dollar. One dollar is all you need, two empty hands, and you're set to go. People often say, how can you double your money? You know how? Fold it in half. That's how you double it. All right, bad joke. Fold it one more time and then wish. Ah, uh, yes. When you wish, the money appears. Pretty cool. Okay, here's the explanation on quarter from bill, how to make money appear. You need a dollar bill and a quarter. Now how you do this is you take the quarter and you place it behind the bill, just like this. Now the secret is you're gonna show it like this with your fingers, but from behind, it looks like this. Obviously, you don't want people standing behind you, they'll see the quarter, so always perform, make sure the people are in front of you when you do this. Now, the secret move is this. You show your hands empty, this hand, and then when you take the bill and you fold it in half, you're actually gonna do this. You're gonna go over and you're gonna grab the money with your other thumb and do this to show this hand empty. But back and forth, it's this, you're just simply slide it over to do this. I'm showing this exposed view to you. You wouldn't want to do this in performance. This is just what it looks like when you're performing the trick. All right. Now, this is the view that the audience sees. So that's what they see like that. Very easy. Yes. Now, once you get you shown both sides, you get the quarter on this side, which this side right here, you're going to take the money, you're going to fold it in half and then regrip. So you're holding the quarter between the bill and then fold in half again and then the money might slide down just keep it at an angle don't do this it may fall out just kind of keep it at an angle hold it like this and then wish and then slowly let the money slide out of your hand making the money appear very cool right are you ready this is good you got four handkerchiefs here you got you got a white one you got a green one you got blue and red uh, five, five different colors all together in fact look uh, we can take this one take the white one use that we'll use that later okay but look you got these you can see we've got four of them we've got the different you can see all four of them four of them if I take them and I squeeze them in squeeze them in like this watch blow the ends look they actually become all one piece uh, it's blendo it's magic uh, how do you do it who knows but 
I can teach you one trick right now. I can teach you one that my grandfather taught me. I'm going to teach it to you. It uses a handkerchief and you can do this too. Now, you need a handkerchief. You need your hands. Say hello to everybody. Hello from a distance. Say hello. Take the handkerchief. Place the handkerchief into your hand, your empty hand like this. Stuff this into your fist just like this. And if you take and reach over and grab your magic wand, you can change it into red just like that. I know. Stuff it like this. Pull it. Stuff it like this. Pull it. Stuff it like this and pull it and it turns into red. And just like that, you've changed the entire handkerchief into red just by pushing it into your hand. Look at that. See? Thank you. I know what you're thinking. It's in my hand, right? No, no, it's not. Oh, but here's how you do it. I'll teach you how to do this. You see what you need to do. You, you, you do this. You have you need two handkerchiefs. You see, it uses two handkerchiefs. That's how you do the trick. Okay. Now here's what you do. You keep the handkerchiefs like this. Now, while no one's looking, all right, you take the red one and you stuff the red one into your hand first. No one should see you do this part. This is the secret move. Okay. Stuff that into your hand. Make sure that's completely concealed in your hand. No one should see you do this part. This is the secret part. You got it? the secret part. Keep it held in your hand and then keep your hand held naturally. Just walk around like this natural. Hey, what's up? What's up? All natural, right? But just don't show the handkerchief in your hand. And then when you're ready, take that white handkerchief, take it, place it into your hand, or really on top of the red one like that. And then you can go over and use your magic wand if you want to. The magic wand is just plastic. It's not even real. Okay. But wave it around and then you can take the handkerchief and pull it just like that. And it changes to red just like that. That's how you do it. Oh, I forgot to mention, never ever separate the handkerchiefs. If you separate them, then they know that you're using two handkerchiefs. So never do that, okay? I did it the first time. Not a good thing. Keep that white one stuffed right there. When you keep that one there, make sure you keep it all stuffed together. And when you do that, stuff that white one just like that and you're perfect. You're set to go. Reach over, grab your wand. You can wave it like this. And then if you leave it like this for too long, something begins to happen. Look, it actually begins to blend together. And that's how you do it. I can't explain it. Maybe it's magic. Hey everybody, you're probably home thinking, what can I do? Well, how about get a book? Read your books. The library is going to be open very soon. You can go back, check out some more books. But right now, get a book. You probably have a book at home. But here's what I do. When I read my books, I actually make the books come to life in my imagination. You see, as I read these books, I can see the words in the pages. And they're actually coming off in the, the pages into my mind right now as I read the story. And the words are up here. And when that happens, there's no more words in the, the book. You see, they're all blank. They're all blank because the story is up in my mind. And when that happens, I can visualize the story and think about what I think the story looks like. And when that happens, I can see the story come to life. Look, there's a battle. Look, there's the pirate ships. There's all the, oh, look, look, look you can see, oh, there's the gold. Of course, you've got uh, the pirate ship right there as well. Now, when you do that, the books do come to life. All for a book that you check out, all the books that you can read, all come to life. Read your books. They're great. The Rubik's Cube. You know what? I had this when I was a kid. And when I was a kid, it would take me almost three hours to so solve just one side of the cube. And how I would solve the other was take the stickers off. Now you may be laughing, but your parents did the same thing too, trust me. But check this out. It's a Rubik's Cube, six sides all mixed up. There is a young man who's a YouTube sensation who has apparently solved the Rubik's Cube in like less than five seconds. It's like 4.7 seconds. Today, I want to try to do it for you while you're there at home. I'm going to try to do this in motion here, fast motion here, very fast motion. I'm going to try to do it in three seconds. Now you can see the cube is completely mixed up. I'm going to try to solve it in three seconds. You ready? Here we go. Okay, I'm not ready. Uh, not ready, not ready, not ready. Uh, I know what's wrong. I need a sandwich bag. I need a sandwich bag. And the sandwich bag here, in the sandwich bag, is completely empty. Completely empty. Trust me, it is. Okay. See, my hand goes in. Empty. Okay, good. Empty. Ah, remember, Ruby's Cube. Ruby's Cube, completely mixed up all six sides. This goes in the bag. And when you start counting, one, two, three, stop. How fast is that? The Rubik's Cube is completely solved. Check it out. All six sides are solved. I know. I, I, yeah. You're, you're thinking what everyone else thinks probably that there's another cube in the bag and there's not. See, it bag's empty, empty, empty. <laughs> no, really, it's, uh, okay, I'll turn it upside down. Ah, uh, look at that. It's empty. See, it's empty. Empty. No, I'm not, hold I'm not holding anything. I know you're thinking, I'm not holding, see, I'm not holding anything. See, it's empty. I'm, ah, uh, fine. 
there is no other Rubik cube. It's empty. It's magic. Teach you a trick right now that you can learn at the library. Now it uses three cards. It uses two kings and an ace. Now that ace is really important, the ace, but the two cards don't matter. But that middle card, the ace, the middle card, that's the one you want. In fact, we'll put the middle card, the ace, right there. So it stays there the whole time. In fact, we'll show you these two cards. These two are the two kings. We don't need them. This is our favorite card. And what is a favorite card? No, it's not the ace. Your favorite card should always be your library card. And you can get this at your library. This is your key to unlock your books for the rest of your life. Are you ready? Magic time. Cool. Ken Scott here with you in my magic attic. It's time. It's time. And I brought my imagination box. That's right. It's my imagination box. Because inside here, I keep everything that's imagination. There's nothing inside the box, but there is one thing inside the box. It's an invisible bunny rabbit. Here, I'll take him out. You see? You can't see him. Here. Let me hold him real tight for you. See, he's very tiny. Oh, oop. he jumped down. Come here. Here he is in your door. Oh, sorry. He's adorable, isn't he? Yeah, he's adorable. Okay, stop. This is, hello, isn't he? He's cute. Now, we're gonna put the bunny back in the box. This bunny, let's just say he's brown. Yeah, let's say he's brown, okay? We're gonna put him back inside the box. Here, step there for me, okay, bunny? Good, nice. Now, as you can see, bunny rabbit. We're gonna put the bunny back inside. Inside he goes. Stay inside, okay? You're a good boy. Now he's brown. Now watch this, if I push that button, he's gonna turn to white. Are you ready? One, two, three, look! He turned to white. Isn't that amazing? Look, come here, look at him. He turned to white. He's such a cute bunny. Yeah, you're not buying this, are you? Yeah, he's invisible, you can't see him. Here, put him here, sit there for a second, snowball. Yeah, here, jump back inside, okay? I'll put him back inside for you. Here, get back inside, good. Stay inside, ready? Watch this. You guys ready for this? This is the words. Read those books. One, two, three, push the button, and voila. Oh, it's Snowball. Isn't she adorable? It's Snowball the bunny. This is our pet bunny. She's so cute. She is seven-year-old bunny. Check her out, check her out. Snowball the bunny rabbit. Sit in your hat, sit in your hat. Snowball the bunny here. One. Hey, Forsyth County Libraries, I hope you enjoyed my show. This is my friend Croco today, and uh, we're going to be coming to your library this summer, and Croco is going to be with me again. He always makes his appearance during the summer appearances. So, he looks forward to seeing you. Take care of yourself, and see you soon.